Hi, welcome back. In this lesson, we will learn the basics of APK files. So before actually getting into the demos and other stuff, what is an APK file? APK is an Android executable file. So an Android executable file will have an extension .apk which stands for Android package file. Now every single Android application that you download from Android market or which is developed by yourself uh, will have an extension .apk. Now an Android application is a compressed file which consists of all the resources like images, strings or whatever other resources that you have used to develop your application and also the code you have used during your development. So if you ex extract your application you can actually see uh, the resources and the code that you have used during your development. Now APK file is nothing but a zip file. It's an archive file. It can be extracted using WinRAR, WinZip uh, and extraction softwares like that. So once if you extract your APK file using uh, any such softwares like WinZip, you will get uh, these five different components. One is meta-inf, res, android manifest.xml, resources.arsc and classes.dx. Now uh, let's, let's try to uh, extract an APK file which is uh, there in my CD. Let's go to Android directory which is our course directory and then get into reverse engineering directory. This is the module uh, reverse engineering and Android malware analysis. So let's get into that. Inside this we have one more directory called uh, app let's get into that inside this we have an, uh, an application hello world apk now you can see this particular application has an extension dot apk now as i as i said uh, this is an apk file and it is nothing but a compressed zip file so it can be extracted using unzip uh, space your apk file name so if you press enter you can see it is actually extracting all your resources uh, and other stuff. Now if you get into the same directory by giving a, giving a quick ls you can see uh, android manifest.xml file which is extracted classes.dx and hello world.apk which is your input file you have given and meta inf is a folder res is another folder and resources.arsc it's another file. So uh, this is what you will see if you extract your apk file now let's try to understand what exactly uh, these components are. Now meta inf, if you get into your meta inf folder, this contains the signatures, the certificate. You can see this uh, CRT cert.rsa, cert.sf, manifest.mf. So when an application is developed by an, and, uh, an Android developer, before actually uploading it onto the Android market, he has to sign it. So those details will be uh, inside this cert.rsa. You can actually look into them. Uh, if you look into this manifest.mf, you can actually see the digest, the SHA-1 digest of your images. You can see the uh, icon. Uh, this is your app's icon. This is the this is the image which is used as your icon of your application, and this is its corresponding hash. Similarly, your certificate details, uh, the hashes for integrity checks, will be residing in this particular meta inf folder. So let's get back. Now there are other directories. Oops. So there are other directories. Uh, one is res. So before getting into this RES, let's try to understand what this resources.arsc. If you try to look at uh, this resources.arsc, you cannot actually read it uh, because it's an unreadable file. Now what it says is uh, it contains uh, the compiled resources that you have used inside your application during your development. So if any resource is not compiled into this resources.arsc, that will be located inside your RES directory. So let's give a quick ls. Inside this we have dryable, uh, let's say HDPI. Let's give a quick ls and you'll be able to see the icon image which is having .png extension. So 
these resources will be under this RES folder. Now again, let's give a quick ls. The next one is, uh, you can see classes.dex. Uh, this is the actual code you have written. But unfortunately, we cannot actually read this code because it's a binary, it's a compiled binary. I mean, it's a compiled file. It's a byte, it will be in the byte code. So that's uh, not easy to read that code, which is in classes.dx. So we need to uh, go for some other options, which we'll see in the later videos. We'll actually see how to read the code inside this classes.dx file. We have some techniques to do that and we'll see them. Now, uh, one last thing that we have to look at is Android manifest.xml file. All right, cat Android manifest.xml file. And uh, unfortunately, this file is also unreadable. We cannot actually read it. So, this particular file, uh, as we discussed in previous sections, Android manifest.xml file is uh, basically used to uh, define all your permissions and uh, re register register your uh, components like activities and other stuff. We'll we'll discuss about those components uh, uh, in a moment. Now let's go back to our presentation. All right, so this is what we have discussed. Now, what's an app to a developer? This is uh, this is what is an app where after compiling and after giving it to the end user. But what is an app to a developer? So from a developer's perspective, Android application is a combination of various components such as activities, services, content providers, broadcast receivers, intents. So to understand each of them, activity provides a screen with which users can interact in order to do something. Users can perform operations such as making a call, sending an SMS, etc. So I have an application test app inside my uh, emulator so if you see this uh, it's actually asking me to enter a password so I enter a password over there click submit it has opened another screen so screen the screen which I had earlier is one activity and the moment I click submit it is opening another screen so this is another activity so as the definition says activity provides a screen with which users can interact in order to do something and the next one is service a service can perform long-running operations in the background and doesn't provide a user interface so basically uh, if you're playing music in your mobile device that's basically a service you're actually doing something and there is no screen available for you to see so that's basically a service. So service is almost similar to your activity, but with no screen. And uh, in general, we do go for these services for long uh, to perform long running operations in the background. And the next one is content providers. Uh, it's one more interesting feature in Android. It presents data to external applications as one or more tables. So data will be residing in the database. Now one application can actually communicate with the database of another application using this concept of content providers. So uh, it's like an interface with which apps can communicate in order to insert extract data from other apps. A classic example is SMS application. Now. I being a developer, I can develop an application to read SMS from SMS application. Unfortunately, uh, I need to specify read SMS permission to do that. Now this is basically about content providers. And the next concept is broadcast receivers. This is one more interesting feature available uh, in Android. A broadcast receiver is a component that's, that responds to system-wide broadcast announcements such as battery low, boot completed, headset plug, etc. So if a uh, system gives any uh, broadcast announcement, your broadcast receiver can actually listen to that. So and once after listening to the broadcast receiver and once after happening, you can you can actually start some other uh, thing like activity or service based on the broadcast receiver you're listening to. Now, though most of the broadcast receivers are originated by the system, applications can also announce broadcasts using 
custom broadcast receiver so what it means is uh, you can actually register for broadcast receivers such as incoming SMS incoming call uh, boot completed a battery low charger plugged so these are all system events you can register for this kind of events so when the event occurs your application can do something but along with this you can also announce broadcast from your application itself so your application can also announce broadcast by clicking a button or doing something like that so this is uh, basically about custom broadcasts and the next one is intents intents are IPC mechanism in Android we can use it to communicate between the components for example you want to uh, uh, for example let's take this particular application the moment I enter a right password and if I click submit it has to open another activity so if you clearly observe these two activities are communicating and this is possible using a concept called intents now I have used an intent to start the second activity from the first activity based on the condition uh, if this particular password is true then please start another activity this is what my intent, say, intent says in this particular context now this is uh, basically uh, an APK file so once after doing this stuff once after compiling uh, your application your you'll get a APK file for example uh, let's see this you have hello world applications code here you can see this so this is my hello world application uh, and once after compiling this particular code your binary your final bi final binary which is dot apk file will be here in bin directory but unfortunately right now I don't have any because I haven't compiled it so let me compile this code uh, it will be started over there in the emulator and you can see this hello world dot apk has been generated so now you can actually uh, copy this uh, export this onto your local machine and sign it and upload it onto the Android market so this is how basically an Android APK file is being generated so uh, in the later videos maybe in other module we're going to uh, try to attack these activities content providers broadcast receivers and other application components uh, just to show how pen tests can be accomplished on these application components so how they can be uh, exploited this is what we're going to see maybe in the la next coming modules so that's all for this video thanks for watching